I get the privilege of doing bold proposal number one. Uh, helping to organize this, I made myself first. So um, I get that privilege, at least. So this is Natalie Portman in Thor as a physicist. And as I often say to my kids about many different things, this didn't happen by accident. So our bold proposal today is all about the stuff of Hollywood, uh, about the glamour, the glitz, and the glory, and the science. <laughs> And so many people, not any of you now, because you've, you've been at this colloquium, but many people think that science and Hollywood don't necessarily go together. But given the fact that at least five speakers have talked about the power uh, of the movies and, and television industry and science communication, we all know that this does go together very well. And so over the last three years, we've been working here at the academies with Hollywood to try to bring more science and better science to film and TV. And we've been doing that through uh, what we consider already to be a relatively bold initiative uh, called the Science and Entertainment Exchange. And so when I said to our folks in Hollywood that we're going to do a bold proposal about the Science and Entertainment Exchange, they said, well, what's that? What does that mean? And so we finally figured out that kind of talking and communicating with each other that what we really mean is we're going to provide a blockbuster today rather than a bold proposal. And by blockbuster here, we mean not necessarily this kind of blockbuster, but more our blockbuster is about inspiring kids to learn science through entertainment. And you can see how much fun she's having learning science. <laughs> So now I want to give you a little bit of a background. <clears throat> and um, the Science and Entertainment Exchange, very quickly, simply, as Ed, Ed told us to do, connects scientists with entertainers. And the Science and Entertainment Exchange was born in the screening room of Janet and Jerry Zucker in their Hollywood home when they were hosting Ralph Cicerone and me. And Janet and Jerry Zucker are producer-director team. And one of uh, Janet's most recent credits is Fair Game. Uh, Jerry Zucker is most well known for his zany comedy, Airplane. Uh, and they got interested in science through their intense efforts to pass stem cell legislation in California. And they supported that cause because of their daughter Katie's juvenile diabetes. So I think it was fortuitous that, that Dr. Cicerone and I were there on this one day in their screening room uh, because on that very day, the basics of the exchange, the Science and Entertainment Exchange, were hatched. And maybe more importantly, I left there with an airplane movie poster signed by Jerry Zucker, <laughs> which is actually my very favorite movie of all time. So, <laughs> the Science and Entertainment Exchange uh, puts more realistic science and more authentic science and more positive portrayals of scientists into popular movies and TV. And it's really on this foundation um, that we are giving our bold proposal and you might think of the Science and Entertainment Exchange as 1-800-scientists for the entertainment industry. So what we do is we match up scientist or an engineer with a writer, producer, or director who has a need. And that need could either be they need an idea, so that would be maybe a writer would be calling us, or they have an, uh, a question that, that deals with science in some other project that they're working on, either the film or a set, set designer. So once we uh, put them together, uh, the scientists could either do a phone call, they could be on set, and in general we've done about 400 consults like that. These consults range from, um, I'm having trouble seeing this over here, they range from, uh, we've done a consultation on house, We've done consultations on Fringe. And in fact, Fringe was in such bad shape, actually, that we had to put together a rapid response team for them. 
<laughs> More recent TV shows that we've uh, worked on include uh, Covert Affairs and Castle. We also uh, work quite a bit on film, and so we've worked on Tron, we've worked on Apollo 18, on Battleship, Watchmen, and in particular, I just want to draw your attention to Watchmen. Jim Kakalios is the uh, consultant that we set up with uh, the uh, set designer there uh, named Alex McDowell. And he ended up working on set with them a little bit, but what else he did was he created a video that teaches physics through the superheroes of Watchmen, posted it on YouTube, and has gotten about 1.7 million views so far. So think about that, an educational video viewed by more than 1.7 million people, almost 2 million people, I think that's, that's a blockbuster. So let's go back to Natalie Portman and uh, to the movie Thor. I'll just tell you a quick story about how that happened. Kenneth Branagh uh, was the director of Thor, and um, our staff put him together with Sean M. Carroll, who is the physicist at Caltech. And Sean thought that it would be better for Natalie Portman to be a physicist than a nurse because of the um, poor representation of physics, or of poor representation of women in physics. And so Kenneth Branagh agreed to make that change. And so you might ask, particularly since we just heard from Martin about evaluation, um, what impact did that have on audiences? And it's hard to measure, and I don't know where Martin is right now, but he's probably <laughs> wagging his finger. <laughs> So our measurement here is Twitter. <laughs> As you can see here, we have some positive remarks. And we also have some that show that we still have a lot of work to do. And even though that I know that there are many, many beautiful scientists, I mean, I mean look at all of you, um, the public doesn't know that because of decades and decades of simple-minded stereotypes in popular culture. So we certainly have quite a, quite a bit of work to do here. In addition to consultations, rather than just uh, answering questions, we also want to spur ideas. And so we have lots of other events that our staff um, puts together. And I only have time to tell you about one type of event, and that's a salon. And for salons, we're trying to spur ideas. And so we get two scientists who are excellent, fabulous communicators, put them in Hollywood homes in front of about 40 entertainers. And they talk about a topic, hopefully their own topic that they know about. Uh, for about 15 minutes each, and then at about midnight, so this starts at about 6.30, 7 o'clock, about midnight we have to kick everybody out. So these are really pretty successful. And we've done a number of salons. We've done um, a salon on evolution that was hosted by Seth MacFarlane, the, uh, the creator of Family Guy. We had Sean B. Carroll, the uh, evolutionary biologist, Neil Shubin. We've done um, one on string theory with Brian Greene. Uh, Origins of Life with Francis Arnold. And then we had a whole team of scientists recently at the Night of Total Destruction. <laughs> and uh, I didn't happen to be able to go to that, but I heard that nightmares were had by all after that. So we do all of this for the Science and Entertainment Exchange. We do this really on, with very few staff, and Ann Merchant, who uh, heads this up, is actually here. Um, and uh, a very modest budget, and that budget comes mostly from sponsors who think that the work that we do is important. So uh, now I just want to show you a quick vid video, and basically the reviews of the exchange are in. We thought the entertainment community, creative types, are fascinated by science. They love what we do. Science fiction is only really uh, it's all that set for Sorry, Science is not a negligible part of storytelling. It is woven into the fabric of who we are. The one consistent thing I know is that every time I go on a journey, is I need more theory than I have. The science professionals that that they have never been incredible and invaluable um, in the storytelling. One of the things that changed in the time, the fact that it's going to be sort of a, a present in their hands. It doesn't just become an 
talking on curves for what is intelligent and so but it's a part of the The science and education exchange is a rare opportunity to touch ground, uh, to find out the fictional space, comic book, very good, other movies, and make contact with real scientists and real scientists, the case of the art frontier as we know. When there is uh, authenticity and inaccuracy and projection and scientific data that they're authentic, that it sometimes invests a, uh, a film with a certain edge and that that becomes uh, a It's been a, a really important uh, resource for me to, to kind of get things right. Um, and I think that uh, the movie can be incredibly influential on audiences. And when you can get the science right for audiences, it you kind of have a double way. We need to make science come alive to young people. We need to make it actually entertaining and exploration of science in a story. Rich exploration of science will drive young people towards the sciences and keep them out of that. So our blockbuster proposal is really uh, has been informed by an event we had in uh, February of 2011 called the S uh, Summit on Science Entertainment uh, and Education. That was a day filled uh, with the stakeholders of those three groups trying to figure out how we can work together to use entertainment to improve dramatically improve student learning. So it was a day filled with TED Talks by people like Ken Robinson, uh, who is a creativity guru, Will Wright, the game maker, and then um, Neil deGrasse Tyson did some facilitation of our breakout groups. So one of the big ideas that came out of that summit, and there were many blockbuster ideas that came out of that summit, won a competition that we also put together that the Moore Foundation funded uh, for collaboration. And Game Desk won that. And Game Desk is um, uh, an LA-based uh, company uh, that is, uh, combines entertainment, gaming, uh, and embodied learning. And they're going to create a geoscience game for us, not for us, for them, but, but through our money. And so I'm really interested in to see what comes of that. I think it can be a blockbuster. One of the other things that came out of the summit was an idea called the science of fiction, inspiring scientific learning uh, through movies. Uh, many people in the entertainment community are involved in this. I think I'm running out of time, so I don't have time. I'm the time person. Um, <laughs> to, to name everybody here, but you can see that we have entertainers, we have technologists, we have lots of educators. This is an idea that will bring, um, it's going to connect science learning materials to scenes in existing film so that we can get kids really on the platforms where they're already using to be able to enjoy deeper science based on the uh, actual film scenes that they know and can enjoy their entertainment that way. And Ola Luchens, who is a technologist on this, really says that this is an interactive, participatory, director's cut of science-based learning. This is a big idea. This needs big funding. It needs lots and lots of educators involved. And I think this has blockbuster written all over it. Uh, another idea that's taking form is uh, an idea that Jerry Zucker has. He thinks we should stand the educational model on its head and actually have Hollywood create online videos that provide basic science, science concepts. And then, when kids are in school, they get to interact. So it's really multiplying people like Jerry Zucker times people like, sorry about that, times Janet English, <coughs> add to that actors, and then you get kids who are interacting at school and applying those concepts. This is just an idea, and it's going to start there. So how many other ideas could we really have when, we, when Hollywood meets science? And I think it's 10 to the power of a jillion. And I have to say, I used to have an infinity sign here, but because all of you are scientists, you would know that that's not mathematically possible. So leveraging Hollywood for the good of our kids is a pretty big blockbuster idea. And uh, I hope we can imagine even more. Thank you. <laughs>